Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and as some of you guys might know, World of Warcraft just received a classic mode where it went back to its roots. Like, literally went back to its roots back in 2004, with no DLC, no servers big enough to be able to handle the crowd of people, that kind of classic mode. It was legit the original 1.0 version of World of Warcraft. And as you guys know, Blizzard, the same company that brings us the toxic online sensation of Overwatch, did make World of Warcraft. So, a lot of people are kind of asking the question, will there ever be an Overwatch Classic? <laughs> I don't know if people really want that, but it's still fun to think about. What would a Overwatch Classic mode look like? To really get a good picture of what Classic Overwatch would look like, we have to go back in time three years ago when it first released on May 24, 2016. You know, the more I talk about this, the more it starts to remind me of this YouTube series I saw one time online, but, but, but either way, going back in time, you start to see Overwatch as more of a nostalgic experience, but the more you think about it, it's really no different than how it is today. Now, I don't mean that in a literal sense where you're dealing with the double shield meta, where you're dealing with this 2-2-2 two, two, two composition, and you're dealing with all the salty players. I, no, I, actually, I, I do mean the last part there, but <laughs> what I really mean by that is that there's still going to be a meta, there's still going to be stuff that people get upset about, and there's still going to be things that you completely forget about, and that you really just look at Overwatch through the rose-tinted color glasses, and you really don't think there's any problems with Overwatch back then than there is now, but trust me, this video is going to remind you of those bad things and good things that would come with Classic Overwatch. So traveling back in time three years ago on May 24, 2016, it was a completely different time period online, especially on YouTube. Demonetization wasn't a thing, Leafy is here is taking over YouTube, and Overwatch just got birthed, and the salt starts commence right away. But that was just the Overwatch experience. It wasn't like how it is today, where people are complaining about the salt, it was just a part of the experience. People were gonna be toxic, people were gonna be being and salty, and that was the fun of it. it you look at it like that. <laughs> but that's what the community would provide. What does the game actually give us players? Well, when you actually find a game, which would be a lot more faster than it is today because there is no roll queue, there is no long wait time because everybody is basically the same rank, you start to see that you can pick any hero. Like, any hero. Even if someone picked your McCree, you can pick your McCree. If someone picked your D.Va, you could still play your D.Va. So on and so forth. There were infinite picks. And I think this was the most nostalgic time period of Overwatch, especially when they got rid of it because no limits was quick play and even competitive. People seem to forget that in season one, you can pick as many heroes that you wanted. You can play double McCree or triple May or go all Winston. And that was, that, that just made the most fun part of Overwatch because you weren't limited based on other people's experience. You can have your own Overwatch experience and people would yell at you, but at least you weren't limited by the people and the game. It was just the people. Back then, you had the choice of DPS both in offense and defense heroes. The defense heroes were clearly the worst kind of heroes that you can ever play, but you also only had a handful of tanks and only four healers and Symmetra. So you really only have three healers. Oh yeah, did I also forget that there were no DLC heroes? Yeah, this is where Classic Overwatch might not be so appealing to a lot of people because if you want a true blue Classic Overwatch, a 1.0 version, you can't have your Ana, you can't have your Sombra, Orisa and Sigma might be <laughs> not really wanted in this Classic mode, but then people will start to say, oh, whoa, 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 what about after the Ana patch? Nope. No, 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 that's not classic Overwatch, no, 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 Either we get a classic Overwatch experience or we don't, and we can't have DLC heroes in the mix of it, otherwise it won't be a true classic experience. That's kind of nitpicking here because yes, Ana was released so early in Overwatch's life, but if we want just like classic World of Warcraft, we have to go to the 1.0 patch of Overwatch on day one. And when you start to think of it like that, you start to miss the Sombra picks. You start to miss your Ana picks. Oh, what about Brigitte? Okay, maybe not Brigitte, but oh, the Ana pick. <laughs> now, some people will like that because they don't have to deal with Sigma, Orisa, or Brigitte, but then they realize, oh wait, I'm, I'm a Sombra main and I'm asking for classic Overwatch. That's basically like 90s kids asking to go back into the 90s when they were born on December 31st, 1999 like yeah you're a 90s you're not a 90s kid all right and you're not a classic overwatch kid including myself i'm not gonna lie but j just remember that but you still have the choice of three healers <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, did I forget to mention that Mercy has her fat res back? Yeah, Mercy has the five man res. Now Mercy means this is where you come in and crave a classic Overwatch experience because not only was she the best primary healer, but also the only primary healer was Zenyatta and Lucio, but you also get your fat res back. And this is where people that did it made Mercy screech because they don't want that. They don't want their ultimate to be negated by one single button, one single press of a Y triangle and Q, but guess what? Guess what? That's classic Overwatch. But honestly though, let's just a spec in this grand canvas known as the broken Overwatch meta because there were so many issues with heroes during this time. Because do you remember D.Va's defense matrix? Yeah, it was infinite. There was no resource meter, there was no anything telling you you had to stop using defense matrix. You use it, and however long you want to use it, you could use it. It wasn't only until after you were done using DM that there was a 10 second cooldown. Oh yeah, a diva mains. Did you know that you had a 10 second cooldown on your defense matrix? Yeah, this isn't a win-win for really anybody, but, but, but we, we forget about Roadhog 1.0. Remember his hook and how broken it was? Do you really want to go back to that? Do you, do you complain about Brigida? Do you complain about Orisa and Sigma? How about Roadhog, bro? <laughs> you deserve the Purple Heart Award if you survive the Roadhog hook 1.0 time era of Overwatch. And basically, nobody would be given Purple Hearts because you would die instantly if you were a squishy hero, if you were a soldier, if you were a Mercy, if you were a Lucio, anybody that got hooked was dead. Y you were done, kid. There was no escaping. There was no nothing. But if you weren't getting annoyed by tanks enough, how about the Widowmaker quick scoping meta where her charge shots were a lot faster to the point where she could quick scope and kill people. You know how people try to quick scope and they just tickle you a little bit because oh, oh, 10 damage, what is that? Yeah, you would sometimes die by Widowmaker. So don't forget about the possible metas going back to the classic Overwatch version because there's the fat res there's roadhog hooks little bit just oh and plus tracer and genji was dominant as well so i guess if you're a tracer and genji man you like this time period because there was no stun stopping you other than just mccree stun but i mean and mccree was also meta too there weren't a lot of unmeta heroes because everyone was just so powerful when you really think about it and that kind of makes it fun because i mean if, if everyone's powerful that means nobody's bad Unfortunately, there were some bad heroes like Soldier 76, but other than that, it was it was a wild time. But when talking about Classic Overwatch, there's also one thing that you need to ask yourself, and that is competitive. Is there going to be a competitive mode? Because on day one, there was no competitive. There was quick play, and there was weekly brawls, and that was it. Now, after a couple of weeks, competitive mode would come into Overwatch, but that's after a bunch of changes came to heroes, like D.Va and Roadhog specifically. But then, again, it's, it's not Classic Overwatch. So so maybe you would have just classic Overwatch on the 1.0 patch and have competitive as well, but you also need to think about how the competitive system was back then because it was a completely different system as well. I already mentioned this, but you also had infinite picks in competitive. So what some people would do would play double McCree or double Genji and then they would just rain havoc because those were some of, if not the best DPS heroes to play. So there was still a meta, it was just worked differently. There was also a completely different ranking system where materials weren't used like gold and platinum, but rather just numbers and symbols. Like if you were ranked 70, you were in top 500, rank 30, you were terrible. I don't really understand the competitive system, so I really like how they changed it in season two. But how could I forget about the coin flip meta? And it's an actual meta because what would happen in the coin flip meta is let's say a draw was about to happen on Hollywood. Normally, if nobody captured the first point, well then you would come to a draw. But what would happen is that there would be a coin flip to determine who would attack one more time to ensure that no draw would happen. And normally what would happen is that the attacking team would always win. It was a very unfair system and that's just a part of the classic Overwatch experience. But after talking about all these things in a somewhat negative light, I'll be honest, there is one positive aspect about a classic Overwatch mode game. I don't really know what it would be. I'm sure it could easily be a mode because they have archives of the old Overwatch patches, so maybe if one weekend they just want to implement it into the arcade, classic Overwatch where they have this kind of system, I'm sure it'd be so easy to do, but in this classic Overwatch mode, one positive thing that would come about it is that there would be no Horizon Lunar Colony and no Paris map, there would only be four 2CP maps, let's go! 
God! There were a lot of good things with Classic Overwatch, but do not forget about the bad things that I think so many people are just pushing to the back of their mind and forgetting Blizzard fixed the game to make it a much more enjoyable experience. A lot of people are looking at it through the rose-tinted glasses because that's when they had the most fun because nobody knew how to play Overwatch. A lot of people want to go back to steamrolling kids where they had the competitive edge where they were clearly better, but it's kind of hard to do that because it was a brand new game where nobody knew how to play and if you're looking for that kind of experience I don't know if that can really happen because everybody knows how to play Overwatch. Even people that played at the beginning and stopped playing, they still know how to play Overwatch. And while that might seem like a fun time to go back and try, again, there's going to be some bad experiences that you remember. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, this isn't as good as I thought it was going to be. But it still could be fun because it would be kind of like a new Overwatch experience because three years, you gotta imagine, three years ago, Overwatch was completely different and it's because there were three years in between. I know it might seem like a Debbie Downer because they just wanna go back to the nostalgic days of Overwatch and I'm totally crushing their dreams when that's not at all the case because I understand that they wanna have a nostalgic trip, but sometimes you just gotta leave the past in the past and just be hopeful for the future because at any given time, Overwatch had its problems and on day one, you just didn't realize it because it it was a fun new experience. But that's everything that Classic Overwatch would have in a summed up version. If you want to see more in depth when it comes to heroes or how the game works, I do have a YouTube series called Three Years Ago where it looks back in time at certain points of Overwatch and I think you would really enjoy it because if you want Classic Overwatch, that series would remind you, hey, you really don't want Classic Overwatch unless it's just a temporary mode where you can experience it for a couple games and then kind of go back to regular competitive. But anyway, guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come, and bye.